Daisy Luther over at the Organic Prepper published a very insightful article, and that's the topic of this podcast. Thank you for joining me. Mike Adams here, the Health Ranger. You know, Daisy Luther is really one of the best analysis writers in the realm of prepping today. Her articles are really on target. I encourage you to, to check out her, her website. And this article in particular talked about how the collapse may not be an all all at once sudden catastrophic collapse that it can also unfold as a day to day you know slow loss of civilization where infrastructure breaks down and stops working or you know the financial system slowly stops working so over time over a period of years people can no longer afford the basics of modern society like electricity or heating or you know even even to buy food that offers any kind of nourishment at all and she points to the the case study of Venezuela which is i think a very accurate way to look at this Venezuela was a a very wealthy nation obviously it has its own oil supply how can you go broke when you can basically just pump cash out of the ground and that's what Venezuela had and before the collapse started, Venezuela was a very, very wealthy country compared to its neighbors in South America. And its residents had a relatively high education. The Venezuelan people tend to be actually, on average, better educated than American people, you know, in terms of master's degrees, and PhDs, and four-year college degrees, and so on. So what went wrong? Well, you know, I've talked about that in other podcasts. Basically, big government tyranny is what went wrong because all the free money in the world isn't enough if you have a socialist running your country. They will still run it into the ground. But as that's happening, they'll take away your freedoms. In Venezuela, they took away the gun rights of the citizens several years ago, leaving the citizens defenseless against government tyranny. They took away the free market choices. They passed laws that dictated that retail grocery stores, for example, had to sell bread at a certain cost. And uh, bakeries had to sell bread at a certain cost. And so, so some bakers, because the flour cost, the ingredients cost was so high, they were trying to make you know, pastries and things they could sell for a profit and stay in business. And the government would come along and arrest them for daring to sell something that made money because according to left-wing socialism, all profit is bad and therefore must be criminalized and all those people must be put in prison. So this is, well, and plus with the price controls of the government, this is how you ended up with a situation in Venezuela where you had no supply. The shelves were stripped bare. Price controls cause shortages. It's basic supply and demand. This is economics 101. But of course, your average leftist is an economically illiterate moron who doesn't understand the basics of money or supply and demand or free market economics, uh, you know, demand elasticity and all kinds of things like that. These are just, this is just economics 101. I took this class when I was in college. Actually, I took I minored in economics, so I, I took a lot of economics classes. But economics, the, the very first class. And I could even tell you the, the, the name of the professor who taught it. I'm not going to, but uh, I remember his name and he served, I think he served in the Reagan administration. Anyway, uh, economics 101, but the left doesn't understand that. And so when, the, when leftists are in charge of economies, things start to break down, but it takes time. It takes time to destroy a nation. And this is why Daisy Luther's analysis is very insightful, because sometimes things don't collapse overnight. Sometimes they collapse over a decade. And Venezuela is still in a state of accelerating collapse. And there's no end in sight. Venezuela's been collapsing for almost a decade. And it's, 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 it might be another decade. It's hard to say. And the suffering goes on day after day, the mass starvation, the destitution, the collapse of health care, the collapse of food and nutrition, all that, you know, just the human suffering and torment, which is the result of leftist 
leaders running countries into the ground. So there's that kind of collapse, and it can happen in America. All you have to do is put, you know, Alexandria Occasional Cortex in charge, and she will drive America into the dirt just like Venezuela. Because she's a moron. She's economically illiterate. And I think she even has a degree in economics or something related to it. But even so, she's economically illiterate, and most of these leftists are. They, they think money comes from nowhere. And so their policies cause systemic destruction across the entire infrastructure of, of you know, finance and money. Now, there can be catastrophic things, black swan events, as they're sometimes called, that have sudden changes, you know, a nuclear terrorism, an act of war, a solar flare that would cause a global societal reset, or an EMP weapon. There can be financial collapse. There can be breaking away of nation states, secession, there can be civil war. There can be natural disasters that, that cause a domino effect of other things to fall. And heck, for all we know, could be these yellow jacket protesters in France start a bunch of bank runs that cause the collapse of the European Central Bank, which causes the cascading collapse of the Japan Central Bank and the Federal Reserve and China. And all. I mean, it's just a domino effect. So you don't know what's going to be the straw that breaks the camel's back, so to speak. It can happen suddenly and catastrophically, but it doesn't have to. And the point is that you need to be prepared for both scenarios. You need to be prepared for not just a sudden reset uh, collapse back to the technology of the 1800s, you know, with stored food and all that, but you also need to be prepared for the slow, long, black death of things breaking down. And by the way, I know we are already in that phase. You go to, to a bank, you try to get anything done at a bank and nothing works. You try to call customer support at a lot of big corporations, nothing works. People don't know anything. Everybody's incompetent. Like not, just nothing works. UPS doesn't even deliver half the time. It's, it's, it's I mean, We're using FedEx to ship most of our packages now because they're the only ones that actually are willing to deliver boxes, it seems. UPS half the time won't even pick up boxes. It's insane. I mean, the only business they're in is the let's pick up boxes and let's deliver boxes business. And they can't even do that. But it's just an example. Nothing works anymore. Universities don't teach students in, in large part. You know, government doesn't work. In fact, government's working better during the shutdown than it actually works when everybody's back at work because th their job is to make sure that nothing works. Because if things start to work, that would put them out of work. So the, the whole mantra of government workers is make sure nothing works. That's called job security. So we've reached this insane twisted point in our civilization where all the incentives are to make sure that nothing works. And meanwhile, the Federal Reserve is creating new money all the time and causing monetary de debasement or price inflation. So all the prices of the things that you need are going up. But guess what? Wages aren't rising accordingly. So you are actually becoming impoverished day after day, week after week, year after year, even if you might be getting a small raise because all the prices keep going up. It's harder on everyone because the inefficiencies are becoming systemic. The waste, the fraud, the corruption of the government, it's breaking down. Remember, I've lived in South America, and I see now how America is breaking down into a South American kind of country, which is totally corrupt. You just have to pay off the police and bribe your way to get the right stamps, the right permits, the right holograms on your passport. You know, it, it's insane. Nothing makes any sense. I've lived it. I've been there. I've done that. You, you want to, yeah, you want to have fun? You want to know what I'm talking about? Try to fly your pet dog in and out of a South American country. You will go on a paper chase that will tell you everything you need to know about why third world societies are collapsing <laughs> because they, they cannot function. It's insane. Anyway, look, the point is be prepared for both types of collapse. Be prepared not only with the short-term food supply, you know, like six months, but also then garden seeds and gardening know-how so you can grow your own food for the next year and, and the second year after that and the third year and so on. 
you can't store enough food to feed yourself forever. You're going to need skills that can last through a very long, sustained collapse of civilization, because that is one potential scenario as well. I happen to think that the collapse is going to be more catastrophic, and there's going to be a breaking point that's reached and, and a sudden you know, domino effect implosion. But I'm prepared for the other scenario as well, the long, slow, steady decline of reason and rationality and self-reliance and just responsible adults participating in society and so on. Be ready for both scenarios. That's the only way to be safe. Read my website, collapse.news, to stay informed. Collapse.news. This is Mike Adams, Health Ranger. You can hear more of my podcasts at healthrangerreport.com. Learn more at healthrangerreport.com. Thank you for watching. If you want to support our mission, visit us at healthrangerstore.com for the world's largest selection of lab-verified superfood and nutritional products for healthy living. It's at healthrangerstore.com.